G'day and welcome. Back in 2012, I finished making an engine stand. These are some very, very rough drawings of what I wanted it to look like. It was based loosely on the Easy Run engine stand, which is an American product. Uh, I started making it a year, 18 months beforehand. Oh, I got the steel and got some bits and pieces cut out of the laser. And I didn't finish it till 2012. And you can see the layout of it. I wanted to make it a little bit better and uh, sort of heavy duty than the American product. It ended up being too heavy. There's a winding diagram, which is all just basically parallel circuits and this sort of stuff. I fitted it out with, um, there's two, or you can see in that picture, two adjustable center cross members for different types of engines. Um, of course, I used autometer gauges, which is a little bit overkill, but I really wanted it to look good. Some of the items were quite dear. You can see the casters, I think, there. They were very expensive. And um, what's coming up next? The, yeah, I used a boat fuel tank. Anyway, we've got a bit of footage of a few engines running on that stand. You can see it runs quite well. We've got 150 degrees, a bit over 150 degrees on the coolant. Oil pressure sitting a bit above 50, around 50. Years though, it's not doing too bad. Pretty happy camper. Not even got much petrol left. overhead noise that'll be from the lifters. We've added this to the engine stand at a wide band air fuel meter um, to tell what the um, what is it the mixture? Yeah. To, to give you a digital read on the mixture also given that engines are air pumps we've got a vacuum gauge there because you can tell a lot just off a vacuum gauge and the rest of it's as you've seen it before. Jesus Christ. Well, I certainly hope you don't mind me showing you a few minutes of some of the engine footage I've got uh, on that stand. Um, what we're going to be building is a lot more modest. This is a little um, Cleveland, uh, I suppose you call it dolly for dragging around engine blocks. It's not a very good one. It's out of square. It's splayed. It doesn't fit properly. It was off eBay. It was nice and cheap, and I don't want it. My brother's got a far better one, so if I need one, I can borrow his, hopefully. Uh, this one... I've never liked, so we chop it up and we make a good running engine stand for a B-series four-cylinder engine, and we will start that now. 
Oh, before I forget, the budget is nothing. We're just using scraps. Um, we have to make it as cheap as possible. And also, I'm making it purpose-built for a B-series. Um, it's not difficult to do sliding cross members on this to make it sort of suit anything. You might even add 200 millimeters or so to make it suitable for a, uh, a running six-cylinder engine. But anyway, that's enough from me. I hope you enjoy. So here we have what was a Cleveland, a Ford Cleveland engine stand. Just a, a stationary one that splayed. So it was never square. So you had to leave those front nuts on that rear, on that front member loose to get it square. So it was never any good. I cut those bits off um, just so I can fit this BMC engine on. There are two BMC engines. One was a 1600 and a 1620. I've just pulled apart and sent some parts away to the machine shop. So the idea of this little stand, I'll add a bit of metal to it. Um, See if we can make a running stand out of it. It's not going to be pretty, it doesn't have to be great, but it does have to be functional. So that's where we're at. We've got to determine if the width is going to be sufficient, which I think it will. The motor is about where I want it, in terms of on this side, on the left. On the right, I can probably take a couple of inches out. Um, so to sort of make it a bit narrower so I can store the thing, because space around here, is a real problem. So I'll take this engine off and we'll have a look. Well the problem with this is it's just rubbish. Um, the wheels, the casters are doing this sort of stuff so it's very very difficult to steer. I'm not sure why, I think they're just underdone. Um, so I'll take one off and have a look at it. Try and figure out why it's so bad. Could be just something as simple as the spaces they've used. Or just be the something as simple as it's just loose. I think it's just loose. But they're steel wheels. I mean, they're all right for what I want. I mean, I just need something to be able to drag around over the garage floor. But I can probably just use some Loctite or something in there. That's a lot better. Okay, so they're just loose. I'm going to take them off anyway because I want to weld this up or start removing bits from it and, you know, adding other bits to it. Basically, we're just going to strip it down. So, so I pulled them all apart. I still think they're rubbish. And I've got a couple of bits of scrap. I think it's 30mm square, isn't it? Yeah, 30 mil square, probably two millimeter wall. Um, that's only about 1.6. Um, I haven't even cut this off particularly straight, but no one cares. So, I'm just gonna cut out a relief so it fits snugly over. And I'll sort of cut it along there, if you know what I mean. So it sits on the top. And we're not doing this particularly well, we're just doing it. That's all that matters, just that bit, yeah. So that's basically the size of it. My Sharpie's getting old. This isn't an old Sharpie, I must have been drawing on too many oily things. Just a very, very loose idea. Those brackets from the back of the Cleveland motor will come off. These will supply, um, I'll just put right inside it or over the top of it. I think that, that stuff fits over the top so I can extend that up and put some radiator things in there. Um, across the back we're just going to go straight onto the uh, sandwich plate. So I'll determine the width of that. That's not even level. <laughs> but I reckon if, looking at that, I reckon the best way to do it is just to get this stuff which I've channeled out and stick across the back at 400 width. So I've narrowed it 50 mil. That'll just sort of sit over the top of that. So I might do that first. Um, and I'll have to, actually I might go and cut these bits off first. It's gonna make it easier to sort of negotiate and then we'll weld it up.
This is a gasless, so it's never as tidy. But that will be strong. I've left too much of a gap there, I don't like that, but I had to say, I'm in a bit of a hurry. Contest, by the way, because if it was, I would lose rather badly. Very up indeed. Um, the back's on. We'll cut those off. Leave those. Got to weld that member in there, and I'm going to weld onto the engine mount bracket to give it more stability. That's the best way. Coming straight off that dropper. I think that's going to work quite well. But, you know, those uprights have to go. Yeah, that one. So I'm going to cut those off. I'll put it back just so I know that it's all good and put some more stuff on. All right. Um, I've taken some bits and pieces off. We have to clean all this up. That world looks pretty bad. It's good down the sides, but not at the top, so we'll pretty that up as well. All I've done is just cut those out. And that will sit, and I'll measure where that's going to sit in there. I've got the engine basically where I want to. And these Cleveland rear mounts are going to bolt beautifully up to there, and then I can run a dropper down. So there's only 8mm bolts holding them on at the moment, which isn't going to be big enough. Uh, I might try 12s fit. That will take up all the slack in there and stop it moving around, which means that they don't line up perfectly afterwards. I can just use a 10mm bolt or something to that, um, you know, a 3 8 or something. Um, they're off the back of the Cleveland stand. These tabs I'm putting on now. I have also, I'm going to pop that there. I've also cleaned up this ready for welding. This sort of fits in like that, but I want to move it back. So I'm going to have to clean up a bit more of that metal and then I'll make a stand, which is less than ideal putting it on top of that. But actually that can go forward and I can make the stand. No, it has to go on the stand because it's going to have to be checked out. So it'll be welded sort of there. And I'll move it close, so the weight of the engine is bearing on that, not the tab itself. So that means cutting that off, which is easy. It's getting there though. I'm not worried about it. It's looking good. Right, well I think that's going to be alright. Um, we've got 135mm from there. These posts are going to have some of this 30mm box over them. And that will be perfect for a radiator. We're getting close. I'll mount the radiator on the outside to give the fan clearance. But all I need is that, and um, maybe a tiny bit longer, maybe with a member and the dash will be up here. We'll make a really nice dash for it. Um, so it's all sort of self-contained. This dropper will fit fine. And I'm gonna fit it about there. Um, so it's not welded on top of that, it's welded onto the, the member there. I think that's gonna be more than strong enough. I really do, it's not a problem. So, uh, I'm going to cut another one of those. This is all out of the engine stand. The two cross members are the, the parts I got from scrap. But I just need maybe another length that long. Maybe. Uh, maybe a tiny, oh, no, maybe that, that long with something to go over the top. And that'll do. That's all we really need to do. So, I'm going to cut another one of these. And just where I cut the, that was where the Cleveland sort of things were. And that should do it, hopefully. Coming along quite well. It's going to be nice and strong. I've just got to weld these up down here. This one's a bit different because it's out. So it's a case if it's not square, but we don't care. So I'll just smash that down with this. <laughs> and then weld it up. Well, we've welded it up, and that's all good. I don't want to run... Well, I've got any sheets there to make gussets, but I just want to run a couple of braces sort of in there, and also down from the radiator tube, or where the mounting is going to be, because that's where I'm going to grab it and sort of pull it around. So, 
the engine's bolted up, so I'll unbolt the engine, lift it off, and finish the welding. This off should be good. But yeah, I'm just going to throw a bit of etch on it. The welding's done. It's not very tidy and nice looking, but I don't think it matters much. Dries in about 30 seconds. What a mess. These um, bearings for the wheels, they must have been lubricated with earwax. They were terrible. There's still a bit in there. I put the screwdriver away. So, what I'm doing is, and some of the grease is really hard to get off, so I'm just using a shirt with a, a magnet dipping them in petrol and they sort of come out fairly clean. So, that way. I'll put the bearings back together and at least the wheels will roll, but there was a fundamental flaw with it because the lock nut on the bottom, as it passes through the caster, as you turn the caster, was loosening the lock nut. It's sort of being punched up the top, but they were loosening it, causing them to do this sort of stuff, you know. So what I'm going to do is put them back together, and I'm just going to put a dot of weld there just to stop them moving. Because once, I won't be able to pull them apart after that, but once um, they're sort of back together, I don't think it's going to matter. Lube these up. Um, I wonder if I should put just a tiny bit more around. More grease. Does that hurt? Although, the more grease you have, the more dust you collect, which isn't a good thing. But the way they were before, they were just unworkable. So, I want to get this done because I think it's going to rain, and I've got the welder outside. So, basically, there's a thrust washer in between it. Then we stick that post in there. Then that goes on like that. Maybe I should lubricate in there too. I should have done it to the other side, but if I take it out now, the balls will stick to it. No, they didn't. Oh, that's all right. There we go. That's better. I feel better now. Okay. I'm going to stick. <laughs> Susie's here, she's dropping comments again. Not like Susie to do that. Then we pop that in. Now the dog started barking. And we put that on. And then that will hold. That is the idea. Let's get my vice grip. And my spinner. There's a bit of resistance over where they initially punched it. That's probably a bit too tight. Oh, gosh. But what I can do, without really sticking any heat into it, I'll just loosen that a tiny bit, and that's beautiful. So what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to drop a dot of weld just there, and that will lock it, because it was just causing... Well, it's still slack there, isn't it? Hang on a minute. Maybe they're just crap casters. Maybe that's it. Yeah, see, they come loose. Right, that's got no lateral movement there, that's cool, and it rolls. Right, so I'm just going to drop a bit of weld there and we're good to go. So all I've done is just popped a little tack on each of them. That will stop that coming undone, and also it won't move around like it did before. So we'll just pop the wheels back in. I've cleaned these sleeves. Where's the wheel? There it is. So we'll just lube those up and put them in and we should be good. You got the Dixie Chicks on. I do. I can hear you, the Dixie Chicks. 
Should I put a little bit on here? Well, I think Kevin wants to make you. He likes cars, so you can talk about cars. Oh, okay. He's got cars, isn't he? Yeah. He's got some cars. Hang on. Kevin! Gee, for such a small tack, I can feel the heat in there. Fucking hell, here we go. Okay, where's the, the lock washer and the nut? Right, yeah, we'll chuck some wheels on. I'm not going to put the lock nuts on yet because I'm, um... Ooh, I didn't check these. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, I'm not going to do it because I've got to pull it apart again. And, um... Then, yeah, pull it apart, give it a nice hammer tone paint job. I'll do it once I've figured out what I'm going to do with the front, because I might have parallel bars that are sort of movable up and down for storage, so I can lower it. But the radiator has to sit. Um, the top tank has to be higher than the, the cylinder head, so... I've got to put the engine on, then I can fab up those things. And, you know, that will be about the size of that. But, yeah, once I've done that, I can sort of... Put it all together permanently. These cross posts are kind of in the way, but I knew that would be, but it doesn't really matter. Right, so we're going to stick that on here. Hopefully, in welding it all up and bracing it, I haven't braced a few classic warps in it. <laughs> I tell you what, though, it is a little bit out of square. I'll show you how I managed to do that. I'm going to avoid this beautiful XW. Every time I see that car, I fall in love again. Um, let's move you over here a little bit. Um, apologies, I haven't even brushed my hair. I look like crap. Alright. Got an old thing. You can come over here. Tell you about these things, they don't even weigh too much. And we'll. I should really lift it a bit more evenly, shouldn't I? Maybe I need to kind of straighten up. I haven't got, I can't find my chain. Um, that's the problem I've got. Then it goes down there somewhere. This is just bolting it up, it took two seconds. Just tighten those nuts up. I cut them shorter because there was a lot of overhang there. Um, I've only got stupid ones for the back. I'm not the right size, but it'll just have to do for now. I've just had to um, bring out those rear mount holes a bit. I only bought them out maybe a millimetre. I haven't got the right size hardware, but it just means. I can get the bolts through. This is ridiculously long. I think it's an aircon bolt of a starly. I haven't got any 5 6 I don't think I've got any 5 6 long enough for it. But anyway, that all bolts up now, which is cool. And they're all going to bolt up, so that's all sweet. It does feel a little bit stiff, but probably because I jimmied the engine back a bit. So, whatever the case, it, you know, it moves around quite easily, which is what we wanted. Um, better than what we had before. Um, it's not the tidiest thing. Wheels around beautifully. Which is precisely what it's meant to do. There's plenty of places on it. Uh, oh, a couple of things. I spaced out that here with the washer because it has moved a tiny bit, but not too bad. Um, what we've got to do, brilliant, is we've got to, I might be able to, Use some of this, I hope it's not too rough on the inside, to slide up and down. Or just weld it. I might just weld it. Um, cross member across the top, a little bit higher than that maybe. Um, so the radiator can go there on this side, on the outside. Um, I haven't worked that out yet, but we're just going to see what we get left with. But that is nice and solid. The engine will run beautifully on there. I don't know if that one will. Because it is kind of messy that one but um, we can do a nice dashboard for it 
and amount of solenoid and fuel pump and all that sort of other stuff. Right, so the theme of this thing was it all had to be free. Um, free to make just with parts we've got. I've got a few switches. I was initially going to have ignition and or coil and start. Found this really mint, um, beautiful thing. Uh, on the roof of the garage, it's often Morris Oxen, Oxford, which is the same as pretty much all BMC cars. Ignition on and start. So I'm just going to pop some, um, just check a bit of continuity with it, see if I can figure out if it's working before I start loading voltage into it. And that would be the start trigger, I think that's on there. So, yeah, how easy is that to tell? Off, on, off. Alright, so what about if we stick it there, that should be start there, shouldn't it? See, that's why this stuff's so beautiful, because you just don't have to care. Uh, right, so, if you put positive into here, then we can stick a light on there, which this one will do, actually any of them will do really. Uh, fit in there. Uh, yep, that fits. Uh, what have we got? So then we've got the brown one. What's this one for? It's just ignition on. I'll just turn that off for a sec. Um, I had a box of LEDs. These are LEDs, by the way, these ones. And there's, whoops, it's slippery, this thing. Um, but I had a box of better ones. Now, hang on, what am I doing with the power? The power goes in there, doesn't it? And that's your starter signal. That start, and this one should be just ignition on. Yeah, it is. That's just a bit of a dicky connection. On, and then starts that one there. So it's really, really good. Um, well, I've also got these globes here. The, the problem with these, I bought these years ago for Wolseley I was doing up, and the problem is they didn't fit, and when I did manage to make one fit, I didn't actually like it. I actually love the... Um, I really like the um, soft glow of an incandescent but for warning lights because you're using this thing through the day I don't object to using um, yeah that's just a stark white one I don't object to using LEDs maybe smaller ones for warning lights because that's the only warning light I've got left and I've got my LED tested but I can't find any of the globes that I had now another thing I've got um, I took this off at the advice of David Morris, guy from the club. He's a good guy. He said, my car was originally Automagic, and he said, don't use one of these with an auto, because you can just press it and the car will start. Um, I guess if we... Just hang on a minute. Just check this out. Hang on, I can't get it out. Positive and negative. That would just be an earth, and then we just energise that, and it should go thump, thump. Should. Beautiful. So if I then get my meter, um, can I get that on me? Let me take, oh, that's stiff. Why is it so stiff? Leave that on. Oh, actually, I can just do that kind of dumbass. Now, if I connect that to there, Go for continuity again, and then connect that side to the black. When we energize it, it should, hang on, where's the power, that one, it should make continuity noises. Perfect, that'll do. Right, so we've got a solenoid for our stand. There's a fuel pump on the other stand, which I'm going to rob. I've got a bunch of LEDs, a big container from somewhere. Oh, working down here, we have a dash for, oh, from, could be a 1560 or a 2480. It's got the 2480 type temperature gauge, which is capillary tube type, and that one's broken. But they're a beautiful instrument. So the temperature and fuel, no, 
the temperature and oil I wanted to use off one of these. That one has a clock in it too. It's a stunning bit of kit. The, uh, there's warning lights there, but I don't see the point in putting a speedo in a running stand. And this is out of a Morris Oxford. That's where I robbed the ignition key from. Same instrument layout. There's no clock in this one. That would go where the M logo is there. That's exactly the same dash as an Austin Freeway, which is the sort of base model version of the Wolseley 2480s. Um, there are some very nice toggle switches, which are common to the cars of the year, the BMC cars of the year. So we can use some of those. I've got some in a bag somewhere. But I do have this one. This is Wolseley 2480, which has that capillary type temperature gauge. I'll just try again with the camera pointing the right way. Um, I've got this 2480 one here. That's what they look like, complete. That oil needle's bent. It's always been like that, at least in the time I've had it. The instrument would sit like that. The temperature is controlled by capillary tube, which looks like that. So you dunk it in boiling water and the needle comes up. That one's actually different. It could be Mark 1 and Mark 2 differences, I'm not sure, but that's actually got the temperatures in there, whereas that's just high to low. Um, they just fit in, into the back. Um, temperature goes in that one. And just screw in so you can sort of change them out. So you can get a 2481, and if you want the electronic one or the electrical one, you would use a 1560 item. And, damn it, it's late at night and I can't get my act together. Um, so that's one way of doing it. I would sooner an electrical one. I've dunked this in hot water and it goes to half in, you know, you pour the boiling water in a mug. So straight away it's not boiling, I guess, but it should go higher than half. Anyway, look, that's that's food for thought. Um, the other thing is the um, move this out of the way. That is what's left of our Cleveland engine stand. So we've got these two bits. Oh, let's just grab. We've got these two bits that were the actual where the mountings went on the Clevo, and they're better than the ones I've got on my big engine stand. So I'll keep those for that. Uh, the other two things, sorry, this this as well. They are going to be good to mount on these lower legs. Whoops, and therefore we can put the starter relay or solenoid in. I'm sort of thinking like that. So one on this side for the starter, that's below where the bottom of the radiator would be or around about the same area, and on the other side the fuel pump. So they're handy to keep. I can reuse those. So the next one I'm going to mess around with this engine, and I'll just see if it'll start. It may or may not. I don't really care about this one. And so once I've tested that, I'll take this off the stand, I'll paint the stand, we'll do a nice hammer tone, we'll put the dash on, we'll make it look good, and we'll do another video on it then. So anyway, look, thanks very much for watching. Take good care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon.
What do you reckon? Shit. <laughs> <laughs>